Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to walk through and carve a bear. So this bear is right around that three foot mark. He's just a few inches shorter. The log we're carving is roughly a nine, ten inch log and this is a piece of poplar. Now obviously you guys use whatever you have hand, on hand. I just happen to have a piece of poplar and uh, I don't know, just thought we'd do another tutorial on carving a bear as bears sell the most and sell the easiest. So it's been a while since we did a step by step and uh, if you guys are interested in that, give this video a thumbs up and stick around. <laughs> Alright guys, so make sure your chainsaws are sharp, you got all your safety gear, gassed up, you're ready to go. Make sure you've got a stable platform you're going to carve on. I've got a stable platform here on the bottom with a good log underneath to raise it up so I don't have to bend down. The carving is going to be within this zone. This is just the platform to raise it off the ground. So, something to keep in mind is to start this off we're cutting triangles and wedges. Okay, so keep that in mind. You're cutting triangles and wedges, roughly those shapes. Obviously not perfect, but something similar, all right? So I'm hoping to have a couple different camera views. Hopefully we can get some close-ups and just walk you guys through this. You know, I've got a bunch of other how to car bear tutorial videos, but I think it's always good to refresh that thing, do a refresher on those carvings. And because why not? So I wanna let you guys know, the tools that I'll be using will be listed down below. If you guys purchase tools or anything through the Amazon links that I provide, they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate that. Also, if you guys shop through the Teespring, you guys can get t-shirts and a bunch of other things that I've designed, put my own logo, my own design on there. Those purchases help support the channel as well. Plus, you guys can go to the Etsy store and uh, purchase my work. I've got bears and other carvings and things that I've made on there, so be sure to stop and check that out. Well guys, we're doing this video a little bit different. I think I'm going to just try to voice over a lot of these cuts. As you can see, I drew a somewhat triangle on top for the top of the bear's head. Uh, I forgot to put the rounded back piece on, so that's what I'm working on right here. But when I go ahead and make those cuts for the ears, like right here, the saw's at a little bit of an angle, and we're not going in super deep. I go in, make the cut, kind of cut it down, come in from the back at an angle and chop that piece out. And I'll do the same for the other side. And then once we're done, we'll get to the back of the head and we'll make a nice angle cut to kind of make the head round up or round down. So it's not so square. Remember, bear's features are not square. When you first start carving, a lot of times your bears look very, very square. And there's sometimes mine still look kind of square as well, but it's something that we all got to work on as we're uh, growing and you know trying to improve on our carvings. As you guys can see there I'm making a lot of little cuts just trying to round the piece off. You'll see that throughout the video I might not always mention it but after my main cuts I'm making small cuts to just you know refine and fine-tune the carving. So here we're cutting back to that ear cut all right I'm doing the same here. Now this is going to shape the side of the head that's what these cuts do and again, this isn't set in stone right here. Okay, we'll go back through, we'll do some reshaping and kind of get more of the look we're, we're trying to go for. As you can see, we're making a little cut by the ear. Going in, we're taking a slice out. This is gonna give my ears just a little bit of height. We're not going crazy on the height with this bear. Just kind of want to keep them low and keep them back just a little bit. Here we're making a pretty steep angle cut. This is gonna be about where the top of the eyebrows and the end of the nose are. Now I gotta go through and kinda clean it up because I want it to be fairly straight across at this time. Once that's done, then we'll go through and, and clean it up and really start working on uh, features of the bear. So real quick, sketched in the top of the bear head. And we're gonna go in and start cutting next to the snout. Now this cut I angle out and away. Same thing on this side, down a little bit and then start working the saw to scoop out and away. So we're moving right into making the cut right here for the front of the face or the cheeks, coming in at an angle. This cut kind of goes, follows your snout cut from the back side. 
If you look on the left, you can see me working the saw slowly back and forth. That's because I can punch through with the nose of the, the bar and feel my first cut line to try not, an, oh, try not to make an overcut into the snout. If we don't make an overcut, we have less to clean up later. All right, moving in to just sort of shape the top of the head and rounding it in. Just making one cut, comes right down in. I'm following that line and removing the hard edge on the top. Starting on the ear, bringing it in right around. With that, it's time to uh, clean up and slim the face down a little bit. So I'll make a cut in front of the ear that kind of comes straight down. Once I get below where I want my ear to be, I like to punch through and bring that cut all the way down. We'll go to the other side, do the same thing. This isn't a super thick cut, as you guys can see. We're just sort of trimming off where we swooped it out. We originally left that so we have room for mistakes, but now we know where we want to be, so trim it off. Come back by the ear, make a couple cuts, and remove that chunk. And while we're here, we might as well clean up these ears a little bit more. Just removing some material, kind of rounding them or shaping them to whatever shape you want them to be. You know, maybe they look like bear ears or Mickey ears or pointy ears like an elf. I don't know, whatever you guys want to do, but clean it up. As you guys can see there, just a quick working the nose of the bar like a sander to kind of round and shape. It's that back and forth motion. This takes a little practice. You guys don't dig in, but you'll see this throughout the video. I'm probably not going to explain it every time, but you guys will use the nose of the bar kind of like a sander. So both ears are done. We're making an angle cut in and down, angling the saw back. This is just below the snout, just below the mouth. As you guys can see there on the left, you can kind of see that cut line. Now right here, be careful because you can get kicked back if you guys aren't careful, all right? So just have a good grip on your saw. Maybe not exactly the way I'm holding it here, but you know, hold it so you're comfortable and so you're staying safe. We'll punch through and remove that material. We'll make some up cuts and kind of keep removing material to that original line that we uh, we made for the bottom of the snout. And I kind of want to figure out the head and the neck. And in this case, I'm going to try to go in and kind of make some angle cuts. Not super deep here. You know, maybe like an inch deep for now and just sort of shape out the lower portion of the neck. Later in the video, we end up removing quite a bit more, but you know, this is sort of giving myself an idea as to the look and what it is exactly I want to do. All right guys, so working on the lower head and neck area, making a straight cut there. That goes in pretty deep. Um, it just does. Now I'm coming in from the back and trimming kind of to that cut. And what we'll do is we'll make a straight cut well below all that and kind of it'll it'll just block the material out so plunge cut slicing down at an angle removing that side piece we're going to do the same thing on the other side here in a minute and you'll see it better this cut this is going to be like end up being where the top of the fingers on the paws are because the way he's going to be holding the sign as you saw in the thumbnail and then we're going to cut to that line i just made so here it is, trimming the fat, removing a little bit of extra to define that neck area. Make a fairly deep cut here, kind of define that lower neck again. And we're gonna plunge cut straight through, which should pop out that center piece. You know, between that lower cut we made a few minutes ago, seconds ago, to that top cut. So right now we're cutting all the way through, as you can see, trying to connect those two cuts, and that whole block should just be freed. Okay, so now this is part of the area where your sign will sit. We will have to remove material in the paws and things, but this is also the time to, okay, now I can see the neck, so it's time to start thinking about how you're gonna shape that and start removing material. Uh, some of these little cuts I can't really walk you through. It's up to you guys, you know, use your, Use your own eyes. It's, it's your bear. You know how it's looking and take your time and go through and, uh, you know, trim them up. Start making that lower neck and head look the way you want it to look. Now that that's done, we're going to make a slight angle cut here. This will be the back of the fingers and paws. As you guys can see on the left, a little bit better the angle. And I also like to come in, figure out the center 
you know, like between the paws and kind of make a wedge or triangular cut. I make one line and then I cut into that line, removing material. This will define and separate the paws once we, uh, once we get to that, that point of defining them. So now we figure out how thick those paws are going to be. We make a cut, which would be the back inside of the paws where the pad is. And that's where the sign is also going to sit. So I made a cut down, made a cut under the neck, realizing I need to remove more material. And now it's a plunge cut going in. So again, be careful of kickback. You know, start with the lower portion of the bar as you start to plunge and give it, f you know, as you get the bar in, then give it full speed until you punch all the way through. You don't want to be going slow because the bar gets hung up a lot more if you do that. Bring the saw down to meet that first line, angle cut in, and kind of remove it. As you can see here, pull it out, make a bunch of little cuts and start removing the inside material where the sign will sit. Now once I get a lot of material removed, I will use the chain on the saw kind of like a sanding tool and uh, after these little cuts and start working the saw back and forth to sort of flatten it out so I don't have all these jagged pieces in there where the sign's got to sit. Here it is, working the saw back and forth to kind of sand away the material because you want a flat spot for your sign, guys. So just work your saw back and forth. You know, you're not cutting down in. You're just kissing the top of the wood and moving it around. So it's always good to have the board on hand. That'll be the sign. Slip it in there, see how it fits. You know, if you have to, go back through and make adjustments. You don't want a super tight fit, okay? Your bear might shrink, pinching the sign. If the customer wants to be able to remove it or change it or replace it, you gotta be able to pull that sign in and out. Plus, it makes it much, much easier for transportation, so I never just screw the signs in place. All right, our sign's all set. Coming in at an angle, and I'm cutting down for that paw. I'm cutting back for the arm. You know, we're only diving in about an inch or so. Um, it is easier if you guys don't have the bark on. So if you can peel your log first, you know, it just makes your life easier. But I don't feel, didn't feel like taking the time to do that. So we're doing the same thing over here. Diving in about an inch, three quarters of an inch with the nose of the bar. Bringing it down, going to the back, for the back of the arm. After that cut, I jumped to the back of the head because now I want to shape the back down and kind of meet the back of my arms and so I want to trim that head and work my way down to those arm cuts to the to the back side of the arm cuts and start kind of trimming away the material you know the back of the head the back of the face and work my way down now sometimes this means we move to the front of the carving sometimes this you know means you start working all over the place but right here you start trimming down by the neck and you want it to flow you know I'm trying to do my best here to make it flow and so going back and forth seems to be the easiest way to do that sometimes, but going in with the nose of the bar, all right, see the back of the arm, trying to remove that material. Again, be careful. This is where you guys deal with kickback. You're using the nose of the bar a lot, and it can run right up the log right at you. So as you see there, I made a little cut near the bottom, about an inch and a half, two inches up. It is better to have a thicker base. I don't always do thick bases, but it is better, you know, more stability and things like that. So if you guys can have it like two, three inches thick on the base or better. Again, we're just trimming away to define the arms right now. So here I'm connecting my lines from the both sides so I can figure out where you know the base of the bear is gonna be. And that line's only going in, you know, half, no, not half, probably an inch. So now we're trimming our bear, coming back with the head, cutting in, coming out a little bit where the shoulders are, and then we'll cut back in for like the lower back and kind of come out near the butt. Trimming the fat.
All right, time to do the legs, which I didn't get a good shot of, but basically I'm cutting a wedge out of the back. I'm figuring out where the bottom of the butt would be. It's good to go in and kind of make a straight cut to define that first, then go in at an angle cut and cut to that line. Okay, see, now I'm going into my line, which I should have done the first time. Once you make those cuts in, then you can kind of come in near the bottom and sort of slice it out. Here we go. Better view for you guys. So the first side's done. So we're coming in, kind of scooping down. And after this cut, you flip the saw, you know, over and slice that piece off from the bottom. But if you knew, use the nose of the bar like this working motion, you can get it to cut, you know, nice smooth lines and not always just straight lines. After the main cuts are done, got to go in and clean it up, you know, small cuts. Do your best to achieve the look you're going for, just like every other part of the bear. Small cuts, and just remove material nice and slow and hone it in. All right, let's move into removing material for those front arms, all right? So we're making that up cut in both arms, kind of going up and right over. Not super deep, but enough where I can, there you go, see it? I can cut up to that line okay cutting up to the line to remove material this, sometimes this can be a pain in the butt you want to try to keep that angle the same so like the belly of your bear you know is, is similar all the way around now my bear is not gonna have super long legs he's mostly gonna be belly and feet I tend to make a lot of bears this way so we don't always just punch through for the legs with these bears. We'll get into it though, we'll, we'll probably do a bear the other way soon. So again here we're making an angle cut between the arms and the paws as you can see on the right. Doing my best to get in there so we can remove this little piece which will then separate the arms and the paws. So here again, fine adjustments guys, you'll go through, clean it up, do your best to remove your overcuts and uh, you know, Use the nose of that bar as a sander if need be, and just work your piece. Now I like to move into the front legs and feet. So we're kind of going to pick the center of the bear. Normally, again, I make a straight cut, not always and then angle cut to it. Now we don't want to remove a ton of material here in the front, we just want to make the, you know, like a nice wedge cut which will be between the feet or between the legs here, guys. You gotta leave enough material in the front of the bear to add feet. So, working this around, cutting in. Sometimes this takes a few cuts, you know, to get in there and really remove that piece. Do your best to feel your cut lines out and uh, boom, there it is. All right, a little tough to see here, but we're gonna make an angle cut back. All right, kind of pick the middle of the belly and cut back and stop short for the top of the feet. Okay, you guys see it there on the left? Angling in, stopping short, taking the saw, angling up. So there you go, now we've defined the, bot, the belly, the body, and the feet. Again, go through, clean it up, round it, and make it your own piece. So our basic cuts are, are done, you know, now we have the shape of the bear and now it's time, like I just said, for you guys to go through and just start shaping your piece, round it off, do your best to make small cuts and adjustments and fine tune your carving. Um, it's not going to look exactly like mine, it's going to look like yours because this is your art and you're going to view it differently and that's fine guys, the whole point is to have your own style and to have your own bears and I do these videos just to help you get started. Um, I like to think my style's all over the place because I don't normally make many bears that, I don't make any bears that look exactly the same. So just uh, go with it, you know? See how you're feeling on that carving and, and just roll with it and make it work. All right, moving into the nails. So if you make three cuts, It'll give you four nails. If you make four cuts, it'll give you five nails. Sometimes four is easier if you've made your paws too small. 
I know it's a silly thing, haha, <laughs> customers buying these bears aren't always too worried about it. Sometimes you will have customers that want the more authentic five nails. So as long as I made my cuts right, I do five, go through, trim the back of the nails like on top there, you know, so they round in toward the sign and just kind of clean them up with the saw. Well guys, there you go. The chainsaw work with the regular bar is done. So I used this bar, okay? It's the same bar on both saws, basically different lengths. Now these bars are the same that you guys would see on your MS-170 and your MS-180. They're a smaller bar, smaller curve, 43 gauge chain, not 50. Normally the MS-250, which is this saw, comes with a bigger bar. We're running, oh, what are we running? 50 gauge, I want to say. Um, and I downsized this to the bar that from the MS-170 and 180s, you know, the 193. What I did is changed out the sprocket, put this smaller bar and chain on. Cuts way faster. Now, you burn up the bar a little bit quicker because it's a little more power for it, but it still lasts long enough to get your money's worth, okay? So if you guys want to see how to do that, I'll put a video link right here above popping up coming across and go there see how to swap this bar out and chain to to put this one on so anyway i'm going to be moving into using my detail bar now my dim, dime tip detail bar is right here on my battery saw but this will fit on your ms170 ms180s uh you guys can order as a kit right through steel that's what i usually do when i need them and that's what i run you buy the bar get yourself two extra chains normally you get a bar's life out of two three chains depends on how you run it okay i've had this bar for a long time this is my second chain and yeah i don't run the saw full bore so i think that's why my tips of my bars last longer if you guys are just all out full throttle running this thing you're gonna burn it out quicker so just keep that in mind there's no sprocket here it's just metal on metal so it's gonna burn up okay um Anyway, I'm going to get into uh, detailing the face with this, kind of making some pockets where the eyes will be, cleaning up any hard edges, and starting my fur pattern. So, uh, yeah, if you guys are enjoying the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, hit the bell, and hit all so you guys don't miss any future videos. I really do appreciate the support from all of you that watch and follow. Also, comment below, guys. I love reading and responding to your comments. It's awesome to know you're all enjoying the video. And feel free to ask carving questions or carving requests, okay? A more in-depth video on something. Maybe I already did it, and I can share you the link, or we'll make a new video and, uh, you know, try to help you out. So, that is that. And I'm going to start making some more sawdust, so don't go anywhere. All right, guys, using the nose of the bar, I'm kind of just shaping and forming the eyebrow to the top of the snout, rounding into the snout, rounding in for those eyebrows, kind of rounding in a little bit where the eyes will eventually get carved in. And this is all just, you know, working the saw back and forth, kind of like a sander. So, I mean, at this point, you could just use power tools if you want, or practice your control with your saw and, you know, continue to use your saw for this kind of work. All right, guys, so we'll be using the nose of the bar here to kind of sculpt the nose of the bear. The whole front facial area, make it smooth, make it rounded, you know, I mean, that kind of sounds contra contradicting, but we'll be rounding the edges. Here you can see we're sort of scraping it up. That's basically what you're doing. You're sort of scraping with the saw to sand it, shape it nice and slow. Once we get this part done, make a couple little cuts by that nose and sort of just, there we go, define that nose and shape it out. And then remove the lower little bit of material so that it, you know, defines it. It makes it a little separate. Come in, kind of make the mouth cuts. I know we don't have that great of angles and camera view here, but, you know, guys, this is where you can really make it your own. And, you know, you, you're already carving. You're already working on your artistry. So figure out how you want your bear to look and practice your mouth, practice your nose, practice those lines. 
I haven't perfected exactly the uh, the look that I want on these yet. And so it's always about practicing and trying something new here and uh, you know, till you get what you want. Now it doesn't mean customers don't like it, it just means it's not exactly how I want it to look, so. All right, done with the snout, mouth, and nose. As you can see here, we're making two little cuts. These cuts will be like the top of the eye, but the lower part of the eyebrow, sort of within that area. Um, that could always change as we get going, but I make those cuts so I know where to start the fur. We'll get in here and add our fur pattern. Now, if you guys want a more in-depth look as to how to do the fur pattern, how to hold the saw, how to get in there, or how to use a different power tool, I'll have a link. Put, I'll, I'll be uh, putting a link at the top here for you know how to add the fur to your bear, so you guys can go and check that out for a little more in-depth look. As uh, this does take some time, get a good workout on the forearms, and we're just going to go ahead and jump into the next cuts. Hey guys, real quick, looking to do that 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Once we get to 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a DeWalt DWE4887 die grinder with two of my favorite flame bits from Sabretooth, but I need your guys' help. Be sure to share your favorite video and invite your friends to hit subscribe on my channel. Once we hit 10,000 subs, I will give those items away to one lucky winner to really help one of you advance in your carving skills. Why? I love you guys and I really appreciate you watching my channel. Thanks. All right guys, so I moved the bear down and I got the board up here we're gonna carve welcome into. All right, now I usually use the dime tip bar, which that's what we'll do first. It can be a pain up there, so throw it on the ground, stand on it, don't cut your toes off. So there's our W, right? We didn't go super deep, just enough to be able to put some paint in there. I did recently get a new bit from Sabretooth. I believe it's called a buzz out. I'm, I can't remember, but it's all right. You guys can see it kind of flat. I think this is like inch and a half or something, but I want to try to use this to cut out my letters. So I'm going to do that next. Well, I like that. That works pretty good. I don't have to uh, clean it up a whole lot. Really does really, really nice, actually. Um, I usually do the signs before I finish the bear if I haven't made signs up ahead of time. So, like, right now, I'll blow this off. We'll hit it with some paint, and then we'll finish up the bear and come back and sand this before we're all done. All right, guys, gonna take my flame bit from Sabretooth, quarter inch shaft. This is the half inch green coarse flame bit. This is the thing I use on like every carving. We're gonna go ahead and do some eyes. If you guys can't see the eyes well on here, again, I'll put a link up here to the eye carving video and I'll walk you guys a little bit closer, a little more in depth on how I carve these eyes out. All right, guys, like I said, the view here might not be the best um, to show you how to do the eyes. And so I will put a link up in the top. I believe it'll be the top right hand corner of the screen in case you wanted to jump right to the eye video. If not, if you want to be able to finish the video, then check out the description below. I will try to have a spot that says links mentioned, and that'll be all the links that are throughout this video that I'm trying to put in here to, uh, to help you for reference. I have a couple eye video links you know how to carve the eyes and i'll share i don't know probably the most recent one you guys can go there and get a more in-depth look at to uh, how i carve the eyes we'll also put the video there on how to do the fur all right guys like i've said before the flame bit got to be one of the most versatile tools out here uh, as far as power tools and burrs and carving, Sabretooth's done a great job with this bit, and I, I use it, I always use it on almost all my carvings. 
kind of sanding and shaping as you guys can see uh, defining that look going through your cut lines and just adding that detail this thing works great there's the nostril holes putting them in with it right there we've cleaned up the ears the snout the mouth just did the nostrils very very versatile tool to have in your arsenal as long as Sabretooth has them available, I will have links through Amazon. You guys can purchase that tool and most tools that I'm using, and those purchases help support the channel. As you guys can see, done with the face, moving right on to the nails, just getting into my saw cuts and cleaning them up with, uh, with the flame burr. It just it does great. I think it makes a great shape for those nails. Getting in there real quick and just making quick nails but if you wanted to take your time and really get a lot of definition and get them really looking like real nails this tool will do that job as well a little bit of practice you can have it look like you've got some real bare nails all right guys moving into cleaning up the snout using a four and a half inch burr disc from saber tooth this is the medium grit does a nice job smoothing out the wood and taking away any of those lines and rough marks like that nice smooth snout look. Guys, yeah, sorry this video is going to be pretty long. <laughs> but we've got our carving done, right? Our carving work is, is done for the most part. And now it's time to hit it with a torch. So I'm going to grab my torch and uh, come back. We'll torch it and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so time to torch. Now, a lot of you might be using these torches, the Benzomatic with these one pound tanks. They work, you know when you do it right. Okay. For me, it takes too long. When I got a lot to do, I gotta get it done fast. This has a little more control, but I need a faster, hotter burn. This wood's still pretty wet, and I need to get it hot. I need to burn it. I need to get the job done. So I've moved on from this, and I've moved on to a turbo torch. This is a turbo torch. It's hooked to a 20 pound propane tank, kind of for your grill. It takes one of these little clickers when you turn the gas on to ignite. And the turbo torch comes with two tips, a big flame or a flame tip that's smaller than this one. And it burns a little bit hotter. Even though they're both propane gas, they still, you know, it still seems to burn a little hotter coming out of this. Maybe because there's a little more force. Um, if you guys want to see more about torches, I did a video talking about torches and their uses. I'll put that again up here somewhere. Go there, check that out. Now, I'm going to torch this thing up. We'll see how we look and do a little bit of sanding. Get ready for some paint. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to torch this. You like that? Change a wardrobe. Real quick. Real quick change out here. Good stuff. All right. Let's torch this guy. The bear's burnt and it's time to sand, but there's something I gotta show you. Something you guys need to be aware of when you're carving too. And that is, you know, you're burning it, stuff's falling off. That's why I usually say find a different spot to burn your carvings. Look at what happened right here. Okay, so embers fell, fell down here, and started catching this sawdust on fire. Now, if I hadn't noticed that, my whole area could have potentially gone up. I mean, this just burned itself out, no big deal. But, if you're going to burn, keep some water on hand. Keep your area raked up. Keep things clean. I didn't do all that because I'm making the video and so I'm slacking. But, keep that in mind, alright? Look, there's another spot right here where an amber had fallen. That's what this is. An amber from burning fell. And it just burned the area around it. But if this was drier... I mean, this thing could just spread really, really fast. And some of you guys are in states where wildfires are the real deal. But I mean, I got water over here. I know my gas cans are there, but I got water over here. And so, you know, able to just kind of water down the area and put those out. So you guys just keep that in mind. Um, you know, clean up your area before you burn or have a safer spot to burn. 
you don't want to uh, you don't want to burn your stuff down, you know. Uh, we need to brush it down or sand it. Now you guys can just use a stiff bristle brush, brush it down. Make sure you got a dust mask on. You don't want to inhale that, or you can use your flap sander. Now this is a homemade one. Uh, you can hit it with that, or you can buy the Sandiflex. Uh, links to all the tools or similar tools I'm using, you guys can find down below in the description. Go there, buy them through Amazon, and they help support the channel. And I really appreciate those purchases. So, when I sand this, I like to make sure that I'm sanding up as much as I can. But, you know, you might have to move the drill differently to do so. But if you sand down, sometimes it creates more fuzz. If you sand up, you're going with the grain, and it tends to not. That is, as long as you've oriented your log where the tree is growing up this way, so the grain's running this way, and you're sanding this way, and it keeps everything smooth. Hope that makes sense. So I'm going to put on a dust mask and get this thing sanded and uh, start rolling into paint. Sanding's done. It's time to put a little paint on. I'm just using a, you can use whatever, Krylon or whatever you can get at the store, just some black paint and uh, spray them up. Paint's done. I gotta let him dry. So we're gonna set him aside, let him dry before we can hand paint the eyes. So what we need to do next is sand that sign down. All right, now I like to use the four and a half inch saber tooth discs and all we do is go through and just sand off the excess and smooth it out. It's as easy as just quick sand, right? Now I need to paint the eyes. I've got all kinds of videos doing a lot of this stuff a little more depth, so be sure to check those out. But you want to just do whatever you want to do on the eyes. Quick bears like this, I do some white. Okay. And if you want to add character, you got to mess with where you're going to put the white lines on the edges. And you can make them look mean or friendly or sad or happy. It's all about just playing around with it and figuring out, you know, the look you want to work with and the look that you want to uh, have on every bear or that bear in particular. All right, so he looks like a pretty friendly bear. And that's it. I'll let all this paint dry and then I'll put an exterior spar varnish or a spar polyurethane. Uh, it's made by Minwax. It's called Helmsman. It's an oil, ba oil based clear coat. I'll brush it on once everything is done and, and that'll be it. That's going to be it for this video guys. I really hope I was able to uh, walk you through. We did it a little bit different but I hope I was able to walk you through to carve your own bear uh, with these steps and techniques hopefully you guys will be able to make something pretty cool something close something similar or something of your own design so i've got a lot of different tutorials on here you guys i will put a list or a link to that list here at the end you guys can click that tutorial or how to chainsaw carve list and uh, see all those videos i have available to help all you new carvers out if you've made it this far and you haven't given this video a thumbs up be sure to do that and be sure to hit subscribe when you hit subscribe hit the bell and hit all you guys won't miss any of my new uploads. You'll see everything new, and uh, you won't miss one of them. So be sure to also check out the links down below. I have Amazon links to the tools I'm using or similar tools. You guys can also check out the link to Teespring and to Etsy. You guys can get merch through Teespring and buy some of my work through Etsy if that's something you guys are interested in. And uh, as always, I thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.